Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. And if you clicked on this video because of the thumbnail, which I'm sure a lot of you have, uh, 50 Shades of Gray is what we're doing today. And there's probably more than 50 shades of gray that you can do on a laser. So we're going to talk about uh, colors, patterns, and yes, even color. I even am able to do some projects in color. So um, how do you achieve this? And well, this all stems from the color palette, which is down at the bottom of Lightburn. And I know that most people in my experience, because I help them and I've helped a lot of my patrons, you know, understand Lightburn a little bit better. Most people don't understand the color palette. And lots of people think that it is just a place to save particular settings different layers well it is that um, but there's a lot more to it now another thing too uh, if you saw the thumbnail should you stop using the light burn material test and the answer is no you should still be using the material test on any material that you're using but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be doing your own custom material tests. And that's what this video is all about today. So uh, if you don't have some time and uh, interest, well, if you don't watch this whole video, you're not really going to get the point. So if you're going to stick around, then we can get started. So uh, let's jump over. Well, let me show you some of the uh, different things that I've done on here for this video so uh, different shading as you see here different types of patterns and there's one there's two and I'm going to show you close-ups of all of these in a moment this is another pattern that can be manipulated in many ways um, this is a miniature picture frame and I don't even know if that'll come into focus but we'll cover this close up in the in the pictures and of course the one I showed you earlier the dog face in different colors and yeah I even got white and I know you're saying that's not possible but I used I left the nose and the eyes intentionally uh, the color of blue which this was blue painted wood so that you could see that this was painted wood and I was able to mix the laser and the blue to get white so yeah and you can get about a half a dozen colors doing it that way using different colored wood so let's get started and let's jump over into light burn and let me explain what I've been doing uh, this is an example of what I've been doing here and wait let me jump back and just show you one more thing because I didn't show you this one and this is probably the most important one so this is a custom test grid and here you can see all different types of patterns and shades of gray. And these are just a few that I've done. So the whole point of this video is to show you how to do custom uh, material tests that you can pick your different shades of gray as well as using some painted material and actually picking some different colors. So here is the uh, light burn and I've brought the cuts and layers out, made it a little bit bigger so that you can see it. And let's start with this one over here, which is going to be the four colored circle. So let's bring this out over here and let me show you what this is. So what I did was I sliced up uh, a circle into four different pieces using the cut shapes tool. And when I did that, I just assigned different layers with different speeds and powers to this. And I got completely different results. Let's take a look at the layers. So the black layer, which is that top left layer right there, is 25,000 speed. I'm working with the Lasermatic 30. 25,000 speed, 100% power. And if we look at it a little bit closer, you'll see that I used 74 point, uh, actually 75 LPI with a crosshatch. 
This is another thing that people don't really understand is that you can really step up your, your speed and your power using a cross, cross hatch and get a dark burn. So I hear lots of people all the time on the internet looking for ways to get darker burns, especially the CO2 users, because when they up their power, well, they just get a deeper cut. They don't get a darker burn. Well, the trick to this is multiple passes. And with this on in two different directions, you're going across the grain. And then you can even change the scan angle to guarantee that you're going across the grain by changing it to 45 degrees. And now you'll see the grain is either going to run up and down or left to right. So this way you will never run with the grain and you'll get a much better burn. But we did have this one in zero, so I'm going to leave it there. Then next to that on the top right of the circle here is the blue layer. The blue layer I did at 15,080 and, and I've, I've done, you know, a lot of these. So I did a lot of those custom test grids like I showed you earlier. I put this one at 150 lines per inch also with the cross hatch and then the gray over here I did at 6020 and 175 LPI so you see I'm changing all of these different numbers and I did this at a regular zero zero uh, degree scan angle so I did all of these at different numbers and Lightburn will now save all of those to those layers so yes that is one of the functions of the color palette down here on the bottom is to save your settings uh, as you go so that you can reuse them so you know that if you wanted this really this blue the really dark looking one in the future you could just assign it to the blue layer and it would remember it but that's not what we're talking about here today now on the picture frame i used several different ones from my custom test pattern that I ran and I got several different variations of that so let me actually show you in the preview what this looks like because you can get an idea of what this is going to look like in the preview window so if I turn off the show traversal moves right there and we zoom in on this here we can get an idea of the different gradients so you can actually see all of the layers in here and this is going to give you a very distinct look like if you're doing a picture frame or something like that let's take a look at the circle so you can actually see these things in the preview window and here you can see that big LPI uh, or low LPI crosshatch you can always preview your work as you go now getting back to the material test I think what I'm gonna do rather than do this and you know show you these these files this way uh, I'm gonna bring up my photos okay so here is what I was just showing you a second ago this is and I can zoom in on this one so you can see it better so I've got the uh, the numbers across the top this one I screwed up over here but uh, I just used random numbers based on old material tests this is a uh, offset fill and you can see that that X in there that always happens with the offset fill because it goes in a circle this is fill 8030 254 LPI and the LPI is something that a lot of people misunderstand because they want to have higher LPI they say well my laser has a 0 0.08 spot size so I'm going to run my jobs at 318 or more LPI and that doesn't help you when you're trying to change the color and the shading on the wood especially you know on a CO2 uh, because it has a much finer pinpoint beam you know it's circular rather than rectangular so on here you can see 254 LPI and versus 175 LPI down here now this one is slower but the power is less as well 6020 but here you can see all of the different results of just different various patterns 
So I happen to like some of this whitewash look down here. You can see here 25,000 fill uh, 100 power and 75 LPI. And then over here, you can see 25,100 and 100 LPI, the difference. And maybe if I zoom out, you can see it a little better. And then 25,100, 150 LPI. There's three different nice shades of gray. And then over here, you've got like the whitewash. So this is all that I've done is a special material test and a lot of people they use all types of tricks to get darker burns you don't need to use any type of uh, additive to your laser so um, here's a really dark burn right here and this one was 8275 and I this was 75 power I just had a typo with the uh, the number two but uh, if you look here, it's a crosshatch. So this was a crosshatch. I got a nice even burn. And here's another crosshatch, 8,055, 150 LPI. And beautiful black burn. So here's two really nice blacks. If you're looking to get black, this, this is all the same wood. Here's a nice uh, gray over here. Uh, and I mean, it looks like white oak. You can actually literally change the look of the wood by doing the entire piece with this setting and then coming back and doing your engraving with this one over the top of it and you can get things that even look like mahogany over here so um, this is what this video is all about is learning how to use these layers and setting them with different settings so you can get different results so let's move on and take a look at the first one now you got to remember that this is flipped up here this 25,100 is this one over here 25,175 LPI and that's what you get right there and you can compare it to the original look of the wood right above it and then if we look at this one 12,000 millimeters per minute 50 percent power 225 LPI is this bottom corner right here and then this is the cross hatch this this bottom right corner and that really is a nice look and you know you can use cross hatch on a lot of projects with a very low LPI uh, so that's 75 LPI right here this one here and then right next to that is similar settings this was 15,080 150 crosshatch this one right over here got a nice gray 25,100 power 75 LPI crosshatch over here this one here and you can see just by changing your settings that you're going to get completely different results and I happen to like this 25 LPI uh, at 45 degrees crosshatch. Can you see the difference between the two there? This one is a box pattern and this one is slanted. So uh, that's number two. That's project number two. This is number three. These are, this one is 16,090 at zero degrees. And it looks like material. Isn't that cool? So that looks like it's covered in some sort of material. And then this one here is 16,090, same exact as that one, with a 45 degree cross hatch and a much lower LPI at 25. And there you can see the difference between the two. So this one looks like a material and this one looks more like a cross hatch. And I'm sure that you can imagine how you can use these in different projects. The next one is the spiral and the, the this is the offset fill and these are both the same just different LPI this one here is 25 LPI and you'll get the anomalies of that spiral in there this one is 50 LPI so big difference in the look by just changing the LPI speed and power is the same 
This is uh, a sample of some testing that I did to make some flowers. And this is just one piece. So this is one cutout piece all the way around. And it's one setting. And this is just using the offset fill. And you can get different shades. Uh, I don't didn't want to go any darker than this in the middle. And I thought that came out pretty good. And it was for a couple of little flowers that went in an Easter basket. And this is the one that um, I'm trying to do a representation of a picture frame. So here in the corners, you can do a dark and then lighten up the next two and then offset, offset fill at a very low, I think I did this at six LPI for the center ones and get all types of different you know a really nice look to a picture frame and uh, you know if you take a square and copy it along the path and put them on different layers like this uh, and then cut it out where the square is just a little proud of the the wood here I mean you'll get an, an incredible looking design but uh, you can see here that I used one two three different layers on this one and three different fills, three different speeds and powers, all in the same job. It's not like you have to run another job. You can also do these in sub layers as well. And this is probably the most interesting result. So I've tried blue, I've tried red, I've tried green, and I've tried white. This, I left these eyes and nose blank intentionally. I cut those out so that you could see the original wood. The original wood was colored blue. Now around the outside, it's hard to, the photograph sort of distorts the colors. The outside is a beautiful whitewash look over here. So the outside was one layer and then the ears was another layer. So both ears and I did these in a 45 degree scan. In fact, I did this whole project except for the offset fill in a 45 degree scan. So you can see the scanning here on, on these two and very at very low LPI. Then I got this beautiful beige color here in the middle. And th this is the laser mixing with the uh, color of the wood. When the laser is burning the wood, if you don't burn all the way through the color, uh, at different points, at different speeds and powers, you're going to get different colors. So I got this beautiful tan color here around the eyes and this white in the middle. And yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anybody get white on an engraving before, but you can clearly see this was a blue, uh, a blue piece of wood right here. So I've done these on several different col uh, colored painted wood. And I've gotten several different colors. I think I've, so far I've gotten about 12 different colors by using different colored wood. So uh, I wanted to especially show you this one because this one has is very dramatic. So um, just to show you that, you know, this is real. <laughs> and here it is. Close up. This is the actual piece right here. So, and I've got all of my settings on the back. So let's see, the, uh, the ears I did at a 45 degree scan, 18,000 speed, 70 power. The eye, um, let's see, the eye part, which is this, this part over here, not, not the actual eyes. That section I did at 25,000 30% power, 45 degree angle. The white in the middle was 45 degree angle, 25,015 power. So what you're trying to do is not get through all the way through that, that paint. And none of this rubs off, by the way. So that's, that's permanent. And the outer was uh, offset fill at 75 LPI. And I didn't write down the power on that one. I'm guessing that one was, um, I used this one here. So it was 75 power and offset fill around the outside. 
So that's that's how I got all of these different colors. So back in Lightburn, that's what this color palette down here is for. So once you've assigned a speed and a power and settings to a, lay, a layer, you can save it that way lightburn will automatically save it that way and you'll have a record of how these come out and then when you take and you start a new project you get out your your test cards in this case this happens to be 12 by 12. i like to do bigger tests than uh, the material test card and i like to use all types of very varied uh, settings to see what kind of results that I can get. But the the beauty of this is that once you've got it, you look at your test card and then you can go back into your cuts and layers and find out which one of those cuts and layers. After a while, it becomes automatic. Like I know that, you know, my red layer is set to cut and I know that my blue layer is set to a dark engraving. I know that my green layer is set to a lighter engraving. So these things come naturally after a while, after you've done this for a little while. And that is the way you use the color palette. Now you don't get rid of the, the light burn material test. There's still, there's lots of different material tests in there that most people don't even realize. So it's not just how well does it cut and how well does it engrave? There's a lot more that you can do if you play with the features. And I think what most people miss in that material test. So if we come in here, it's not just, you know, uh, speed and power. It's not just speed and power. You can change this to anything you want. But what they miss, and I know a lot of you know that you can pull these down and you can do interval and passes and, you know, things like that. But it they miss this right here edit material settings so you can you can do the same thing that I'm doing in a slightly different way by clicking on this forgetting about the speed and power and just working with these parts down here so you might want to do let's say one six by six in fill at uh, you know 50 LPI and one pass with a cross hatch like that and now these settings will apply to your test card so what from here down anything you do in this area right here is going to get saved by the material test so i know that very few people actually come in here and change any of these settings but this is where you can do you know 25 20 25 or more different types of settings on your material test cards or you can do it like I do creating your own which is just as fast and easy but I like to take a standard material test and work from there so you can see where the if you do like a, a 10 to 100 uh, grid say 10 by 10 and you do minimum to maximum speed then you can look at that and see a clear gradient with different colors. Then I go from there and I say, okay, well, this looks pretty nice here in the middle, this one setting, go back into the material test and edit those settings, the material setting by clicking that button and change the parameters of the test and you'll get completely different results. That's about it. If you have any questions or comments, I'll take them below. But hopefully this video has introduced you to more of the features by editing the parameters of your material when you're testing it. Because I know there's just so many people out there. I see it every day in, in the Facebook groups, in my forum, in the discussion groups. I see it every day. People are putting up items that are engraved all one shade of gray. And it could look so much better if you just go in and you start doing some material tests and you start playing with the LPI and you start, uh, you know, playing with the offset fill and things like that. There's just so much you can do. You know, the, you're always going to find that one guy in those groups that posts the most beautiful engravings. And that guy 
or girl understands editing the material settings, all of the parameters, and using different layers. So it's not just zero zero for engraving and and uh, zero one for cutting, or which is how a lot of people use the the layers. It's all about custom material settings. I hope this video has helped you today and will push you to start doing your own material tests and start making some really incredibly engraved products. As always, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.